For lesson 12.4, we're actually going to get into uh, a way to investigate if uh, a series is going to converge or diverge, where you won't be able to see immediately that it's an obvious P series or a geometric series, but I'll say from the beginning, and this is extremely critical, you will see part of the sequence being either a P series or a geometric series. And that's so critical for success. So it, it's going to be more complicated. There will be more uh, things added or subtracted and involved. You'll see that in a moment. But let's just review what's happening with the P series, one of the most delightful and basic ways to tell if a series would converge or diverge. Uh, if you have 1 over n to the P, again, if P is greater than 1, our series will converge. And by way of comparison, if our series power up there, P is less than or equal to 1, immediately we can say that our series will diverge. Well, today we're going to work with a basic comparison test. And uh, let's just say that we have two series given to us. So, the series a sub n, the summation with a sub n, and b sub n, very importantly, we're going to assume for the moment that these are positive term series. Uh, we have no negatives uh, at all. But here is Roman numeral number one. If we can say that series b converges and a sub n is less than b sub n, for every positive integer n, so a sub n term by term is smaller than b sub n, what you're going to see is the summation of a sub n must converge also. Here's a visual, and in fact this visual perhaps can help us out. What you can see is I'm going to graph the partial sums. In other words, perhaps I'm adding up the first 10 terms and you know, then we'll add up the next 20. Or for that matter, maybe we're adding up the first 1,000 terms. Uh, you know, regardless, we're going to progress and add up more and more terms over time. We are told in part one that uh, the summation of b sub n will converge. That means as we look successively at more and more partial sums, we're going to see that our partial sums begin to approach a limit L, uh, that we will begin to get closer and closer to some fixed number. And uh, you know, we talked about a bandwidth before, about how we could get as close to that number as we'd like. But here's the, the catch. So that's blue dots, the partial sums. In red, we will have red stars. That's representing the partial sums for A sub n. Now, a sub n term by term will be smaller than what we have for b sub n. So we're guaranteed that those red stars have to be lower than those blue dots. But if the blue dots level out, there is no way that the red stars can shoot off towards infinity. If term by term in a sub n, we must be smaller. So that will guarantee that this series in red stars must level off as well. We don't know what it's going to level off to, what it will converge to, but we're guaranteed because it's a smaller series, it must converge also. So again, what did we just see? We're seeing more or less that if you have a convergent series B sub n, and again, you were told that A sub n was smaller than B sub n term by term, that means that this series A sub n must converge as well. As we look at number two, this is the second component. If b sub n diverges and a sub n is greater than b sub n, term by term, a sub n would always be larger, like a sub 50 would be larger than b sub 50. The 50th term and, and the sum for series A would be larger than the, the term in, for series B. Well, what we're going to know then is, again, for every positive integer n, this is holding true, a sub n must diverge also. Again, a visual can be helpful. Again, let's uh, remember that we were told that b sub n, the blue dots, diverge. 
Uh, so as we are plotting out those partial sums, if we know we're shooting off towards infinity, uh, you would see that upward trend. You'd see those blue dots getting higher and higher. However, a sub n, term by term, must be larger. So these red stars indicate, well, wow, as I'm adding up all those terms, clearly I'm going to have a larger sum. And if the blue dots are launching off towards infinity, well, those red stars are going to have to go as well. So those are the basic ideas behind the basic comparison test. Now, I do think it's stating the obvious that all of a sudden kids can say, so are they going to give us two series? No, you're going to have to create a second series. You will be given one series. You're going to have to create a second series that hopefully you will recognize as a key series or a geometric series. But first, something to discuss, some basic fundamentals. And again, I certainly don't mean to insult anyone's intelligence, but we're going to go back to the fundamentals of fractions. And it's not a bad place to start here. Let's just say that you have a very simple fraction C over D. What we're saying is if you just look at the numerator, if C gets bigger, if that numerator gets bigger, the overall fraction as a value would have gotten bigger as well. And you can think about that uh, comparing something like one-fourth going to two-fourths or to three-fourths. Uh, you're clearly getting larger. You're not changing your denominator, in other words. By way of comparison, if that numerator gets smaller, your fraction overall would get smaller. Now, the denominator we should also pay attention to. If the denominator gets bigger, your fraction actually gets smaller. Now, think about it. If you were to look at one half and if you said, uh, hey, my uh, denominator just increased to one fourth, overall, your fraction just got smaller. And reversing would be as well. We could have started with one fourth, and if your denominator actually got smaller, your overall fraction value got bigger. We need this type of thinking in this section uh, because we will, at least for the basic comparison test, remove one term usually from either the numerator or the denominator so that we can arrive at a p-series or a geometric series. Let's come and see this in action. Let's just take a look at series a sub n. We're going to say that uh, series A sub n is the original problem. This is example one. In other words, A sub n is equal to n all over 5n squared minus 4. And you can see that these forms are getting more complicated than what we've seen in previous homework assignments. Uh, but here's what I hope is jumping out at you. If you were to omit the minus 4, if you were to drop that subtraction of 4 out, not only would your overall resulting new fraction be simpler, but it could also be thought of as an eventual p-series. Here's what I'm getting at. With b sub n, I'm going to omit the minus 4. Now, the big question is, did our denominator just get bigger or did it get smaller? If you think about it, it's gotten larger. You've dropped the minus. So as a result, uh, you've just gotten larger. By way of comparison, uh, imagine that you were even uh, plugging in n equals 1 to the both. You could clearly see that you have a larger number now if you compared both denominators by plugging a 1 in. And if you have a larger denominator as a result, uh, that's what we were talking about in number 2, this overall fraction actually is going to be smaller, isn't it? Uh, but this could divide out, and you can say, well, this is really just... 1 all over 5n. b sub n would be 1 over 5n. And we can say that b sub n is actually going to be smaller than a sub n. 
So where do we go next? Well, the question is, could we investigate what's happening with this new, simpler series? Well, we can take a look at B sub n right now. This B sub n, this 1 over 5 sub n, you could factor that 1 fifth out, and you will have a P series. The power down below will be a 1. And in fact, technically, this is the harmonic series. So you could even say this, which is a divergent harmonic series. What's happening is right now we're looking at this new series B sub n. We're recognizing that we can state that it is diverging. I'm calling your attention back to that second picture that we're looking at right here, where if you know that B sub n is going to be uh, launching off towards infinity, but A sub n is actually going to be bigger. That means we can say, by the basic comparison test, This original series diverges also. And please understand, when you're doing these problems, this is really like a proof. We're going to have to go through uh, you know, the significant steps of showing your new series, always making a statement that the series would be larger or smaller than the original. And then you can use the basic comparison test as the reason why you can say that your series will converge or diverge. So we're going to stop the video here and then press on with example two.